are going to work on our rainbow tree. And the really, really fun part about this one is the blending of the background. Um, we are going to go all the way from blue down to red. And in order to do that, there is blending right on our canvas. And when we do that, there's going to be kind of tricky parts where um, you're going to kind of have to get a feel for things. And as you do that, I'm going to show you exactly how to take off paint or put more paint on or, you know, what we need to do. So don't, don't stress as you're going. This is just going to be a really, really fun background to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my biggest brush and I'm going to dip it into my blue. So I've got just blue here. And I'm just going to go, we're going to go kind of on a diagonal as we come down. So I'm going to start by just crisscrossing and getting this blue paint going. And as I do that, it's just going to kind of come down. Now I want to think about the amount of colors that I have and I want to think about how much of each color I want. So you guys are kind of going to decide that for yourselves because everybody likes different things. But I'm going to come down to about here with my blue. Now as I go, we need to kind of work on this fast. Not to be chaotic, but because we want the colors to be wet as we go. I want the next color to be green, so I'm going to mix a little bit of blue and yellow onto my plate, but for the most part, I've got a little bit of each color on my brush, and I'm going to kind of let it mix <clears throat> directly on my canvas. So I just got some more yellow here, and then as I go, and I got this green going, now that I've wiped off a lot of it, onto my canvas so see how my my brush isn't that loaded anymore now I'm going to go up into that blue and the two colors just mix right together and I don't lose my blue and I don't lose my green but the trick to doing that is to make sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush when you go to do it so if you need to you need to wipe off that brush with the excess color before you go into the blue. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add more yellow here. And I just want that green to lighten up a little bit more. And see how I'm bringing it right up into the green now. So it's still not straight yellow but it's lightened. Then because I want straight yellow, I'm going to rinse off my brush really, really good, dry it off really good, go back into just yellow, and while that's wet, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put just my yellow So that you can really see that come through. Now my yellow is my halfway point. So I want to know that I'm about halfway through my canvas. I've got the other half to do now. So same thing as we did with the green. I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow and red to make orange for my next color. And again, you decide how much of each color you want, what shade of orange you want. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting my orange here. But again, I'm not going to go into my yellow just yet because I don't want my orange to overtake my yellow. So once I've got a lot of that wiped off, and this one I feel like I have a lot of color still on, so I'm just gonna wipe off my brush here. And then because I don't wanna lose my yellow, I'm gonna dip a little bit more yellow and some of that orange so that I got that back on there. And then I'm gonna come right up here. And again, because they're both wet, that's what's gonna get them to blend together. So 
if they weren't wet, they would just kind of go over each other and not mix. And then last but not least, I'm going to go right into my red. I'm going to dip a little bit into my orange so that these can blend together here. And then finish out. right there. Now I'm still not happy with this line right here, so I'm going to go back in with my orange again. And I'm going to work that line just a little bit more so that it's a little bit of a softer blend. So it's not such a harsh line. See how that kind of made it disappear right there? So that's what you want to do. So now we've got our background. So the next part is going to be to draw our tree on, but what's going to be important is to let this dry completely. I just noticed that I've got some white spots here, so it's important, especially since we blended, that we fix all the white spots while it's still wet. So if you've missed anything, you want to really make sure you go back through it now and cover it. I noticed up by the yellow, there's a spot as well. Make sure that brush is completely cleaned out though before you go into your colors. Otherwise, you're going to end up with red in your yellow, and that's not what you want. So I'm going to get just a little bit of yellow up here and just cover that spot real good. Like that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it down and we're going to let it dry. And once it's dry, then we're going to go ahead and we are going to uh, draw our tree on it first. Okay, so now that our background is dry, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start working on our tree. So when we think about this tree, we kinda of wanna just make it kind of fun and we kinda of want it to, I don't know, swoop in the wind, we'll say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start up here with my branch. So this is gonna be my top branch, but I want it to curve around. I want a nice big curve to give myself lots of room for the branches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve this all the way down here, give it a nice big swoop at the end. So this is just our starting point. So right there. And then what I'm going to do is just like any other tree, I'm going to widen that trunk down at the bottom. So as we come up, it gets a little bit thicker. And as we come out towards the top of the tree, it's gonna be thinner. And we can do a lot of this with our brush, but I wanna really get my shape kinda down with this tree. And what I want it to do is I want it to just be kind of flowy. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna curve my branches out. And I don't want them all the same height or the same length. Just kind of want to get them around. I'm going to put a few on the top here, but not too many. I don't want it to be a really, really full tree. What I want to do is I want to put some uh, like petals on here and leaves on here and then have a couple falling to the ground. So we're going to start right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my black paint. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll my brush into my paint. I want all those bristles sticking together. Or The harder that I press with this brush, the wider my line is going to be. The lighter that I press with this brush, the thinner my line is going to be. So I'm going to start by pressing really softly when I'm away from the tree. And as I get closer to the tree, I'm going to press a little bit harder so that my line gets a little bit wider. So as I get closer, I'm going to press harder. And you can see there now it got a little bit wider. Now my branch isn't exactly 
straight there. So, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but I'm just gonna play with it just a little bit here. And I'm gonna keep doing that to all these branches. Now, with the trees, we don't wanna just take a line and stick it straight out. We want it to kind of curve and be rounded. So again, I'm gonna have it be wide towards the trunk of the tree. And then I'm gonna not press as hard as I come out. And I like to turn my canvas a lot so that I can get as comfortable as an angle as I can. The more comfortable I am, the more natural my brush strokes are gonna be. I'm just gonna keep going around and doing the same thing here. There we go. Now we're gonna to wanna to be very patient, take our time, because that's how we're gonna do our best work. If we rush, we're gonna end up frustrated. Again, as I get to the edge here, I'm going to press softer and softer. steady that hand, just make sure that your paint isn't wet. You don't want to hand print it. So you want to really think about where you're going to put your hand, but there's going to be a lot of points when you're doing this that you're going to want to steady your hand on the canvas. And then as I get towards this part of the trunk, this is where I want to pay attention to it getting thicker and thicker as I come down. So at this point, I'm putting the full amount of pressure on this as I go so that it's nice and wide. And I'm just using that smallest brush, so even though it's nice and wide, it's not going to be too wide. I'm going to keep curving it down. And then once I get into this bigger part, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my other brush to kind of fill that part in. And I have a couple areas that I just want to fix up here while I've got this brush going right now. So 
So you want to kind of look at it and see if everything makes sense to you. If there's something that bothers you, you're going to want to go back and kind of readjust it and fix it so that you're happy with it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm still going to use this brush so I don't need to clean it out real good right now, but I'm going to go into my medium brush and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill this last part in. Turned my brush sideways, that's giving me a little bit of a smooth line here. And then I can go in with the wider part and fill it all in. I'm going to go right off the canvas, just like that. There we go. So then I am going to rinse off that brush because we're done with that brush. So I'm going to get that nice and cleaned off. We don't want that paint to sit in there. So I can dry it off. So I'm going to go back in with this little brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to these branches. And I don't want to put a ton, but I'm going to put a couple little branches on each one. Now again, when it comes to these little branches, we want to keep them thinner. We want to space them out because we're going to be putting things on them. And we want to go ahead, and again, we don't want them to just stick straight out. So I'm just kind of deciding how many I want and where I want them. And everybody's going to decide something different for this. So as always, it's going to be your taste and what you like. So I may have more or less than you, and that's okay. What I don't want is I don't want them to end all at the same spot. So I want them to all be different lengths and heights and all that good stuff just for fun. And then again, the harder that we press, the uh, wider the line's going to be. So I'm pressing pretty softly here, because I don't want it to be too wide. few more down here because I want some dangling. Like that. And then we want to do a couple up to this side. Maybe one little one right here. Kind of like that. So we've got the start. So now we can go ahead and we can rinse off that brush completely. Now the next part again, we want the black paint to be nice and dry. So you want to give it a minute here for it to dry. Okay, so now that my tree is dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting little like flowers on it. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use my smallest brush. It's nice and clean and dry. I'm going to roll it into my white paint. And what I like to do for this is I like to find the spot that I'm going to put it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use dots. And I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. And then it kind of hooks together. So that kind of gives you an idea. And let me do it in a darker spot because that will show up better for you too. So then if I go up here, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, 
five. And that kind of gives me a little flower shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend the next few minutes just putting as many or as few as I want on here. And I'm just gonna keep doing one, two, three, four, five. And as long as it all touches, then I'm happy. They don't have to be perfect. And you are gonna decide how many you want. Some can be bigger, some can be smaller, some can be a little bit odder shaped. But you kinda of wanna think about, again, not having them all start and stop in the same heights and all that good stuff. And what we can do is we can go right over the branch in some points. And what I want to do is kind of bring it down to a point down here. one more here. I don't want any giant gaps. So again, I can do some smaller ones to fill in some spots. So if you find as you're doing this that you see any like thick spots of paint, sometimes we get thicker paint by doing this with the, um, by just doing the dots. And so if I find that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off this brush and like right here, I'm just nervous that it might drip and I'm just going to kind of dab at that and that's going to take my extra paint away. So that's just something to think about. And just remember as you're doing these placements, you're just kind of deciding how many you want and how full you want this tree. It's completely up to you. If you start getting tired, it's gonna be important that you take a break and that you don't start to rush because then you might wanna 
change something that you didn't really see if you were going slower. And as we go, you want to keep thinking about where you want these and where to hold your um, canvas. Because again, I've got the white paint now that's wet and so I can't necessarily hold my canvas exactly the way that I would have originally and that's going to be important to keep remembering that that you don't want any you don't want to smudge the wet paint See, like right here looking at that I know that I need to fill that in more I'm not happy with how that's bare like that. So I kind of want to widen that out. I think I might widen right here too. I see it kind of just curving down this way so I want to put a few more in here so it kind of makes it a little bit different shaped. So I think I'm pretty pleased with how I've got it filled in right now. And then what I want to do is I want to have a couple just kind of falling off. So I'm just going to kind of put a couple throughout the air here. And again, that's as many or as few as you want. That's up to you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And as I'm letting that dry, I'm going to rinse out my brush, wipe it on the side here, make sure it's nice and dry. And then I want to make sure that I have all the colors mixed for the rainbow um, because I'm going to put the center of the flower with the different colors from the background. So now we're going to go ahead and mix a couple of our colors so that we can just reach right in and grab what we want instead of having to stop and find what we want. So I mixed my blue and yellow to get my green. Now I'm going to rinse off that brush, make sure it's nice and dried off. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of orange. So I'm taking a little bit of my yellow and red and that is going to make my orange. And then I want to make sure that I have enough red, blue, and yellow to make sure that I can make some of the centers those colors. And then again, this is going to be up to you on where you put these. I do like to make sure that I kind of, you know, mix a few in here and there, but on like the red and orange, I'm going to do a few that are red and orange, but I want more of like the blues and the greens because that'll pop more. So like I'll do a couple down here 
of the orange, let's say. And then I'll go through and I'll put some more orange. And again, there's gonna be no real rhyme or reason. We want it to balance. So we wanna try not to put, you know, all orange next to each other. But we do want to, oops, we do want to, that paint's still a little bit wet, so I'll go in there with orange again later, and that's okay. But we do want to make sure that there is orange spread throughout, well, every color spread throughout. And in these areas where there's a few more, I can make sure I do a few of each. But it's gonna be up to you on how many you do. We just wanna keep them kinda of spread out. So I'm gonna clean off my brush. Every time I go into a new color, I'm gonna clean off that brush and start over. So now I'm doing green. So the green is going to be good up against this orange and yellow here. Oh, we got some water. So I laid that flat so that it doesn't drip. I'm going to go ahead and take a clean paper towel. And I'm just going to dab right on top of it. That took the water right off. So you can see it's gone now. And next time, what I didn't do was I didn't dry off my brush enough. So we want to really make sure, sometimes the water gets caught up in here and everything, and I don't realize it. And so I want to make sure that I've got that nice and dry. That way that water doesn't pool in there. That's better. So I'm going to spread these out. And again, in these areas where there's more flowers, you might do a few more. And of course, if you like one color over another, you can always use that color the most. So I've got that going so far. I'm going to clean it off. I might find that I might go back in with orange or with green or whatever color I'm using and I might add more at the end, but right now I'm just kind of throwing it on there to see what I can get to balance. And the next color that I'm going to go into is red. So again, the red, since it's down here, I'll put, you know, one down here so you can see it, but I'm going to use it definitely more up here where you're going to see it more because it's against those opposite colors here. And then the red is pretty similar to the orange, so you want to kind of be cautious that you don't put all the red and orange together, just like it'll be for the green and blue. And again, as long as you're happy with it, that's all that matters. Don't forget, if you've tried your hardest, then no matter what, you have something awesome to be proud of. That's always important. I'm trying to decide where else I want to go here. I've still got yellow and blue to put in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse off and dry that brush off real good. I'm going to go into my yellow next. Yellow is definitely lighter, so you're not going to see it from far away nearly as easily as you will like the red, and that's okay. I'll make sure I'm not missing anything. As I go, I know I still have blue left, but I don't want it to be where there's too many together that are the same color. Yep, 
So I'm gonna stop there, rinse off my brush, dry it off really good. Go into my blue. See, there are some that still need to be filled in, but I don't want to fill them all with blue, so I'm going to end up going back into another color. And I do want to make sure that every branch at least has one of each color, if not more. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse off. I think I might go back into my orange. Dry this off really, really good. Let's see what we can finish off with orange here. looking to see like we've got red, blue, orange, green, blue, and I don't have any yellow right here, so that's how I'm going to decide what to make this one. And then right here we've got everything but green, so I'm going to want to go back in with green, and then I think everything else is covered there. So let's go ahead with green. Right here. And then, I think that's it. So you're going to want to check your flowers, make sure that everybody's got a center there. And then you want to look at everything. You want to check it all out. Um, I do see right here, I have, an eraser, or I have a pencil mark. So I can go ahead, since this is nice and dry, everything's dry, I can go ahead and I can erase it but you want to make sure that that paint is dry. But other than that, I can just check it all out, see if there's anything that I want to go back and fix or change, and then we're good to go.